If you're a fan of country music, rock and roll, or even gospel, odds are you've heard of Johnny Cash. Born in 1932 in Arkansas, it didn't take this country boy long to become the award-winning artist we know and love today. By 1955, J.R. Cash traded in his career as a door-to-door appliance salesman for his first recordings at Sun Records Studios in Memphis, which turned out to be the start of an unforgettable career. However, like most of us, Johnny Cash's success did not come without its downfalls. Just a few short years later, drug addiction threatened to end Johnny Cash's career career for good, but he was able to save his career and redeem himself in the most unlikely place, prison. If you're ready to relive the full story of Johnny Cash's career, make sure you stick around for the full video. Facts First presents How Prison Concerts Saved Johnny Cash's Career. If you're a longtime Johnny Cash fan, let us know by clicking the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to stay up to date with all our videos. Johnny Cash's Early Life Johnny Cash was born as J.R. Cash on February 26, 1932, to Carrie Cloverly and Ray Cash. He was born on a farm in Kingsland, Arkansas, along with his six other siblings. Being born in a sharecropper family during the Great Depression, J.R. Cash was no stranger to hard work and hardship. He was known to sing gospel music with his brothers and sisters as they worked in the cotton fields to stay afloat. When Johnny was just 12 years old, tragedy struck his family beyond repair. His older brother Jack was severely injured while out working to earn money for the family, eventually leading to his untimely death. It's this guilt and economic hardship that Johnny Cash cited as inspiration in much of his music later on. At 18 years old, Johnny went on to serve in the military as a Morse code operator, intercepting crucial messages from the Soviet army. He was stationed in West Germany for four years in this position. After being honorably discharged, he moved to Memphis with his new wife Vivian, picking up odd sales jobs while trying to make it as a radio station announcer. But it wasn't until 1955, at 23 years of age, that J.R. Cash became the Johnny Cash that we know and love today. Johnny Cash's career debut. In 1955, Johnny Cash sang gospel music for the producer of Memphis's Sun Records, hoping to strike a deal. Unfortunately, by that time, gospel had fallen out of style. But that didn't stop Johnny from returning the next day with brand new rockabilly songs he'd written himself. It was then that his debut songs, Hey Porter and Cry 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 were recorded and released, the second of which reached number 14 on the Billboard bestseller list. Soon after this success, Johnny Cash was invited to tour and record with Elvis Presley, landing him on the famed Million Dollar Quartet recording and putting him on track to become the famed country music legend he was destined to be. By 1956, just a year after selling his first recording, Johnny Cash wrote and recorded I Walk the Line, one of his most famous tracks. This song alone sold over 2 million copies and, of course, topped the country music charts for over 40 consecutive weeks weeks. Just a few short years later, Cash decided to leave Sun Records and moved with his wife and children to California, now signed under Columbia Records. While his career skyrocketed once in the Golden State, demanding him to tour and perform nearly every single night, Cash's personal life was not as fortunate. With easy access to drugs and alcohol while on tour, Cash was rarely known to be sober. It was here that his career's downfall began, spiraling out of control. In the early and mid-60s, Cash's addiction had caused quite a few run-ins with the law, which triggered problems on the home Home front. In June of 1965, Cash mistakenly set fire to Los Padres National Park in California while under the influence with his nephew. Destroying over 500 acres of this protected national park, Cash was fined over $100,000 for this offense. In October of the same year, Cash spent a night in jail for attempting to smuggle narcotics, his usual drug of choice, across the border from Mexico to America. In the same fashion as similar incidents he occurred during this period of his life, Cash was able to post bond and walk free. However, these Common run-ins with the law during this troubled time in his life would certainly play into the redemption of his career that was to come. On this time in his life, Cash was recorded saying, I took all the drugs there are to take, and I drank. Everybody said that Johnny Cash was through because I was walking around town 150 pounds. I looked like walking death. Of course, given his choice of lifestyle, it didn't take long for Cash's addiction to take a toll on his marriage and family life. His wife Vivian filed for divorce in 1966. Enjoying the story of Johnny Cash so far? Keep watching to find out how he was able to turn his life and career around. Then be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other great Facts First content. June Carter and Prison Concerts 1968 is officially known as Johnny Cash's comeback year. He was finally able to take some very necessary steps to reclaim his life and career. After his divorce, Cash was also able to reconnect with old touring companion and musical confidant June Carter. On March 1st, the two were married and together revived his career. With a fellow musician and 
and songwriter now by his side, Cash was inspired to jumpstart his career in a whole new way. Nine years earlier, back in 1957, this country music star had begun to play for free in prisons after watching the 1951 documentary Inside the Walls of Folsom Prison, the piece of art that inspired his 1955 song, Folsom Prison Blues. With a new fire in his belly, Cash decided he would play in prisons again, starting with the one that inspired this hit song. In 1968, Cash went to Folsom Prison with his band and a recording team to play for the inmates. Capturing the live reaction of real inmates, Cash had a unique record that no one else would ever be able to replicate. This record, live at Folsom Prison, earned him two Grammys, and the following year he went on to record another prison concert, the even more popular Live at San Quentin. It turns out these prison concerts were so wildly successful for multiple reasons. First of all, it allowed Cash to buy into the outlaw image he had fallen into in his previous years. By embracing this image as opposed to rejecting it, it's believed that Cash accepted himself as he was, and so his fans followed suit. Additionally, the Folsom and San Quentin records were unique in that they uncovered life in prison in a way that no American would have been familiar with up until that point. By demystifying inmates and bringing awareness to the criminal justice system, Cash provided education, entertainment, and intrigue to his audience all at once. And households across America weren't the only ones who loved this side of Cash. After the release of Live at Folsom Prison in 1968, Cash got numerous letters from prisoners all around the country requesting him to come and play at their institution. Cash often obliged, playing at countless prisons for free over the next few years. And although these two albums went on to be the best-selling of his career, many don't know that Cash performed many more prison concerts at other institutions that weren't recorded and didn't earn him any money. And so, it was clear to many that Cash wasn't doing these prison concerts just to benefit his career or his wallet. It was truly something he was passionate about. Perhaps because he understood that if he hadn't been a country music star, his own life choices could have landed him in the same place as these prisoners. On this topic, Tommy Cash said that his brother always identified with the underdog. And there are a few times in Cash's career where that's more apparent than his famed prison concerts. In fact, Cash was known to stay in the prisons beyond the time of his concerts, to sit down and speak with prisoners about their experiences. He became impassioned about issues such as the lack of support inmates received once released, and the fact that first-time prisoners were held in the same facility as hardened criminals. Cash realized through these one-on-one -on -one talks and observations that the American prison system, instead of helping criminals improve themselves, actually ensured that they would stay outlaws for the rest of their life. Cash even went on record saying, I mean, I just don't think prisons do any good. They put them in there and just make them worse. Nothing good ever came out of a prison. That's all I'm trying to say. In 1972, Cash put his money where his mouth was and attended a U.S. Senate hearing to not only bring more visibility to the issue of prison reform, but to also demand real changes. He spoke of the horrors he had seen and heard about taking place in the prisons, including an incident where a 15-year-old boy had been killed after being assaulted by other inmates at an Arkansas prison. Cash asked the U.S. Senate to separate first-time offenders and more serious criminals, believing this would increase the chances that their first offense would be their last. Additionally, he wanted better preparation and counseling for inmates who were going to be released. This way, newly released prisoners would more likely lead successful lives on the outside, as opposed to falling back into old, unlawful habits. Cash also felt that while in prison, inmate discipline should be more rehabilitative than punitive. And while many would argue that Cash's demands fell upon deaf ears, this certainly does not mean that his dedication to prison reform was for nothing. In addition to putting his career back on track and allowing him to reach new heights of stardom, Cash was also able to donate money to prisons to better their facilities. But most importantly, Cash said during this time with the U.S. Senate that people have got to care for prison reform to come about. And if nothing else, he sure did make people care. The Johnny Cash Show. With his career back on track due to his passionate prison performances, ABC agreed to sign Johnny Cash on for a variety show. After his previous comeback year, thanks to his famed prison concerts, the Johnny Cash Show solidified Cash's standing as a country music superstar. Cash's show not only showcased musical talents such as Bob Dylan and Ray Price, but it was also a wonderful outlet for Cash to speak about the topics that were so near and dear to his heart. Among these were the rights of Native Americans, the Vietnam War, and of course, prison reform. Before Johnny Cash's prison concerts and the Johnny Cash show, most people were unaware of the injustices that were rampant in the system. Cash was often applauded for using his famed platform to bring awareness to such topical issues, and his legendary contributions to music, prison reform, and more will live on for years to come. Thanks for sticking with us to the end to hear all about Johnny Cash's career comeback. We hope you learned something new about this country music star's stellar career. And what better way to leave you today than with these famed words from Johnny Cash himself. All your life, you'll be faced with a choice. You can choose love or hate. I choose love. Now we'd like to hear from you. Which Johnny Cash prison recording do you like better? Folsom or San Quentin? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give it a like. And remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss 
miss any updates from Factsverse.